All right, I've been putting this off as long as I can. The quotient rule, kind of nasty. And I would recommend that if you have a chance to get out of using the quotient rule by turning it into a product rule, we'll see some examples of that later on. But, you know, and I've already covered a few in the previous chapter of, like, algebraic ways to get out of it. However, there's just some situations where you have to do the quotient rule pretty much. I mean, like this example, I could, to get out of the quotient rule, I could turn this into an x to the minus 2 times sine x. And honestly, I would recommend you do that because the quotient rule, I don't know, I just don't like it. But hey, there's other times, well, we could actually do the same thing here. The reason not to do it on this one, we could do x squared minus 1 to the negative 1 times x squared plus 1. But that's just trading one injury for another. Sure, the quotient rule is a bummer and creates a lot of extra math. It's just kind of a big, nasty formula. On the other hand, this turned a quotient rule problem into a chain rule problem. Because when I do the power rule on this term, I'll have to do the chain rule. And that's going to create the same difficulties that I was trying to avoid in the quotient rule. So it's kind of like out of the rock, uh, sorry, out of the fire into the frying pan, or out of the frying pan into the fire is usually how it goes. But um, you know, there are opportunities like this to where I think you actually will save a little bit of work by switching it to product rule. Just depends on what you like personally. I've actually met a few students who prefer the quotient rule to whatever other kind of trickery they can do. But again, you've got to be really solid on algebra. You don't want to make a lot of mistakes. You need to be a person who does not make any mistakes. So here we go. Now once again, just like with the product rule, we're going to label these u and v. So if you look at this quotient rule, you can see there's a lot of u's and v's and v primes and stuff. So I'm just going to label the top u and the bottom v. Now on this one, it really does matter because we have a minus sign and stuff. So you see how the formula has u over v? We really do have to label the numerator u and the denominator v, and it's not interchangeable. Order matters. All right, so without further ado, plug and chug. It's going to be a giant fraction. First we put v, so that's x squared minus 1. Oops. And then multiply that by u prime. The derivative of x is just 1. Then we subtract u, which in this case is x, times... Uh, v prime, which is just the derivative of x squared minus 1 is just 2x. And downstairs, you read that right, it's just the original denominator squared. So x squared plus 1, oops, x squared minus 1. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, that's going to be a nasty foiling situation, to which I would tell you, you know what? Usually you're just going to leave it alone. The denominator in a quotient rule problem, you can almost always just leave it the way it is. So I would, I would encourage you not to worry about oversimplifying everything and like just leave stuff nasty. If your teacher will let you leave it nasty, leave it nasty. All right, so x squared minus 1 minus 2x squared is the numerator, and the denominator is still, again, I'm not going to factor, I'm not going to foil this out. Let's see, so that's just x squared minus 2x squared is negative x squared, so negative x squared minus 1, combining like terms, over x squared minus 1 squared. Oh my goodness. I'm actually not done. I happen to have come up with a problem where there is some reduction possible. So what I'm going to do is, see how we have an x squared minus 1 downstairs? And we have an x squared minus 1 upstairs? Oh wait, no, that's not going to work. I was thinking if we factored out an x, a negative 1, we'd have a negative times x squared minus 1. That should be x squared plus 1. So. Hope I didn't confuse anyone. Yeah, we're done. My bad. You got to be careful. These quotient rule problems, man, they can mess with your head. All right, so once again, first step, u times v. So first I'll work this with quotient rule, and then maybe we'll try working it as a power rule problem and see if we get the same answer, or see if it was easier. Um, so f prime is going to be v, which is x squared, times u prime, so the derivative of this then we subtract u, which is the numerator, times v prime, which will be the derivative of the denominator, which is 2x, all over x squared squared, which is x to the fourth. All right. So is there anything I can do with this? Not really. I mean, the only thing we could do is factor out an x from the top. So if we factor out an x, we get x times x cosine x minus 2 sine x. Because remember, I just factored out an x, so that's where this x went. All over x to the fourth. So this x will cancel. 
one of these. So I'll end up with x cosine x minus 2 sine x all over x cubed. All right, so that's one answer. Let's try working it as a power rule problem, like I suggested on the first, at the beginning of this video. So we could rewrite this as x squared, uh, sorry, x to the negative 2 times sine x. That's the same thing, algebraically identical. So we'll label one of them u, label one v. So f prime, in this case, is going to be u, which is x to the minus 2, times derivative of v, which is cosine x. Then we're going to add v, which is sine x, times derivative of the other thing. So what's the derivative of x minus 2? It'll be negative 2 x negative 3. All right, so so far, you're probably thinking to yourself, man, this doesn't look a lot like the other answer we got. But I think algebraically what's going to happen is, um, because I, this other one's a fraction, I'll try doing that to this one too. So we'll just, we'll make those two fractions. This first term will be cosine of x over x squared. And then this other one will be negative um, 2 sine x. And then that x to the minus 3, we're just going to put downstairs to be x cubed. Still doesn't look exactly like the answer we got the first time with the quotient rule, but it's getting closer. Because if we wanted to make this a common denominator, we'd put an x right here and bump this up to a 3. And now you can see we have exactly the same answer. So the product rule, quotient rule, I don't know. We could argue about which one looks better, which one gave you a better answer quicker. I don't know. The quotient rule looks pretty good to me in this particular case. But hey, if you hate the quotient rule because you hate remembering which one comes first or whatever, you might want to stick with the product rule. Now, the way I remember which one comes first, you know, because you'll have to memorize this formula. So one trick is, or one problem that students have is, hey, how do I remember which thing comes first and which thing com comes last? Well, the way I think about this is that it's just like the product rule, except there's a minus sign instead of a plus sign. And then the other thing, I, so, but then, so that helps you get the sign right, but then how do you know which one comes first? Is it v u prime or u v prime that comes first? Well, the way I remember it is the denominator wins in the quotient rule. I feel like the denominator, it gets squared, which is great for it. It just got doubled or whatever. It just got, you know, multiplied by itself. So there's a lot of v's in this formula. So the denominator wins. If the denominator wins, it also doesn't get subtracted. It does the subtracting. So that's why the denominator is going to be the one that doesn't get the derivative taken first. It's going to take away, you know, it's going to stay itself, and it's going to take away the loser. Anyway, this might have been making sense to you, but that's the kind of way you want to be thinking about it. Try and come up with some little story or narrative you can think of about denominators versus numerators that will help you memorize this formula. That's my advice. Or if you're really good at memorizing it, just memorize it. But... Anyway, that's how I did it. All right, so once again, we got a quotient rule opportunity here. So we'll label them u and v and plug and chug. Looks like f prime is going to equal v, which is square root of x plus 1. Now, it's important to notice here, this 1 is not under the square root. It's just square root of x, stop, plus 1, times u prime, which can be 2x, minus u, which is x squared, times a derivative of v, uh, v. So what is the derivative of v? Well, the derivative of that 1 is just nothing. The derivative of x root x, which is really x to the 1 half, right? So the derivative of x to the 1 half is 1 half x to the negative 1 half. And all that goes over v squared, so the original denominator squared. Which, once again, I would not encourage you to foil out. Uh, but, uh, man, I'm writing crooked. All right, so now we just got to foil this thing out. I assume your teacher would not accept this as a good answer. So we need to foil it out and combine stuff where we can. So we're going to get 2x root x plus 2x minus 1 half. And then x squared times x to the minus 1 half would just add the exponents and get x to the 3 halves all over the same old junk we're always doing, which is square root of x plus 1 squared. All right, so we're not actually done yet, because if you look real close, this is actually another x to 3 halves power, because this is 2, x, x root x is x to 3 halves. So that means that uh, this guy and this guy 
our like terms. So that's what we're going to do. 2x to the 3 halves minus 1 half to the 3 halves is going to give us 3 halves x to the 3 halves, which I know is really confusing looking. And then we'll add 2x, and that'll all be over. Square root of x plus 1. Now perhaps you see some awesome way that you could reduce this. Oops, squared. But I do not, so I would just put a box around that, and worst case scenario, you know, you lose two points or something. If your teacher is a mega stickler for simplification, which, again, I don't know this can be simplified, but I know it would take long enough to find out that it's not worth doing. So, got to choose your battles in the AP class. You know, just figure if you get most of the problem right, use the right formula. If you get most of the points, better off to get a shot at another problem than wasting all your time trying to simplify one answer and not even get to the end of the test. All right, why don't we need the quotient rule? Well, this, um, as I mentioned before, best to avoid the quotient rule when you can. And what's going on here is that we can just convert this into a regular polynomial. The trick is, because the denominator is just a single x without any pluses or minuses or anything, we can just turn this into three separate fractions. x squared over x plus 3x over x minus 2 over x. And it might not look like the smartest move ever because this isn't totally beautiful, but this does turn into x plus 3.